Today, I have 10 interesting and surprising facts about multiple sclerosis with some sources and further information below. Let's have some fun. Fact number one, the prognosis of MS may not be as bad as you imagine. When people are first diagnosed with MS, they're often afraid of requiring a wheelchair, but most people with MS won't need one. In fact, the data you're looking at is from the MS EPIC study from the University of California at San Francisco, which showed that for people with relapsing onset MS, after 20 years of disease, only 16.2% of people even required a cane. Not too bad. Unfortunately, with progressive onset MS, the risk of disability is greater. Fact number two, relapses may not be as important as you think. Although relapses in MS can cause short-term disability and we use relapses to measure the effectiveness of our drugs, they may not have a strong influence on the long-term prognosis in MS. And in fact, modern studies suggest that the number of relapses in young people with relapsing MS doesn't really correlate with disability many years later. And there are multiple reasons for this. One is that a lot of people recover well from relapses. And number two is that it may be the pathophysiology physiology of progressive multiple sclerosis, which is not strongly linked to changes on the MRI and clinical relapses that may be more important in the long run. And this is consistent with my clinical experience. I have some patients who have had many bad relapses, but they always seem to recover and they don't have progressive multiple sclerosis. And I have other patients who have had relatively few relapses, but went on to develop progressive multiple sclerosis as they've gotten older. This is an important topic for future research. Research. Fact number three, Epstein-Barr virus may be the cause of multiple sclerosis. Now, there are many known environmental risk factors for MS, but perhaps none is so strong as EBV or Epstein-Barr virus, the cause of mononucleosis, you know, the kissing disease that makes you sleepy, also known as glandular fever. It's known that a large percentage of the adult population is exposed to EBV at some point, as about 90% of people in the general population will test positive for antibodies suggesting that they've been exposed to the virus, whether they had symptoms or not. But many studies suggest that 100% of adults with multiple sclerosis have evidence of antibodies against Epstein-Barr virus. And some people, such as esteemed multiple sclerosis blogger Professor Gavin Giovannoni, have suggested that Epstein-Barr virus may be the cause of MS, or at least a necessary but not sufficient risk factor for MS. And of course, this deserves future research, but some people believe we could create a vaccine against EBV and eradicate MS. Fact number four, hormones play an important role in multiple sclerosis. We know that women are much more likely to get MS than men. About 75% of people who are diagnosed with MS are women. However, if you look at people prior to puberty, MS is rare in young children, but when it does occur, the sex ratio is one to one. An equal number of young boys and young girls get MS, but after puberty, the number of teenage girls with MS outweighs the number of teenage boys. Furthermore, we know that pregnancy can be protective against multiple sclerosis relapses. The high estrogen state of pregnancy decreases the risk of relapses by 66% in the third trimester, better than most MS disease modifying therapies. And we think there may be more endogenous steroids during pregnancy, and there may be some natural adaptations towards immune tolerance to prevent your own immune system from attacking the fetus. However, after delivery, the risk of MS relapses temporarily increases and can cause what are known as postpartum relapses. My mentor, Dr. Annetta Langergruld, found that exclusive breastfeeding, in other words, when the only source of nutrition to the infant is breast milk, that may decrease the risk of relapses. And there's also evidence from Dr. Barbara Geiser at UCLA that the estrogen hormone estriol may be protective in multiple sclerosis. And further research should clarify this more and if hormone therapy can be used in MS on a wider scale. Fact number five, the risk of multiple sclerosis varies tremendously by geography. For instance, the risk is about one in 350 in the United States, but only one in 25,000 in Cuenca, Ecuador. And it turns out latitude is a big factor with the risk being higher further from the equator. 
Part of this may be due to decreased ultraviolet radiation with increasing latitude, which has an important role in regulating the immune system, and I have a separate video on that. Also, low levels of vitamin D are also linked to multiple sclerosis. Now, we know that there are a lot of environmental risk factors for MS, and it turns out that most of the risk is driven by factors prior to age 15, and we know this because of migration studies. For instance, if you migrate from an area with low multiple sclerosis prevalence to an area with high multiple sclerosis prevalence, if you migrate after age 15, you retain the low risk from where you grew up. But if you migrate early in life, prior to age 15, then you acquire the new higher risk in the area that you move to. Fact number six, MS is an old disease. Although multiple sclerosis wasn't formally described until the 19th century by Jean-Martin Charcot, we know many historical descriptions of medical illnesses are consistent with MS. And one very notable and perhaps the earliest case is from someone born in 1380, Lidwina the Virgin, the Catholic patron saint of ice skating, had a relapsing disease causing paralysis and blindness strongly consistent with multiple sclerosis. Fact number seven, the severity of multiple sclerosis is not genetic. It is true that genes play some role in the risk of multiple sclerosis. The data you're looking at is the risk in people with certain types of relatives with the disease. And for instance, if you have an identical twin with MS, your risk is around 20%. However, the severity of MS does not correlate strongly between family members. All the time, I see families where multiple people have MS and some have the disease mildly and have, some have a more severe case. Also, some of the individual genes associated with MS risk, for instance, HLA-DRB1-1501, they do correlate with risk of MS, but not with severity or prognosis of the disease. So prognosis may be more related to environmental or perhaps chance factors. Fact number eight, MS is very commonly misdiagnosed. You would think with modern medical technology, we would get it right every time, but unfortunately, many symptoms of MS can be nonspecific, and many other diseases can be associated with white matter changes on MRI scans, and so the disease is commonly misdiagnosed. And one study at Cedars-Sinai and UCLA in California of the United States showed that 17% of people carrying a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis were actually erroneously diagnosed and actually had a different condition. Fact number nine, inflammation in multiple sclerosis develops primarily around the veins in the central nervous system. It turns out that lesions on MRI in multiple sclerosis are perivenular around the veins. It's difficult to appreciate on low Tesla strength MRI, but with 3T, 7T MRI and on autopsy studies, it can be shown that the lesions develop around the postcapillary venules. And in fact, some people have hypothesized that abnormalities in the veins could contribute to the risk or development of MS, particularly the Italian vascular surgeon, Dr. Paolo Zamboni, who proposed the theory of chronic cerebrospinal venous insufficiency as a cause of multiple sclerosis, although this has never been proven and has not gained widespread acceptance. It turns out that there are other diseases with the same perivenular inflammation, such as Bichette's disease. Fact number 10, doctors used to use a hot tub to help with the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. It turns out many people with MS are sensitive to the heat and a rise in body temperature can worsen neurological deficits temporarily such as weakness and vision changes. This is known as UTOFS phenomenon and is thought to result from a temporary decrease in conduction through demyelinated nerve fibers in the central nervous system in MS and sometimes this can occur with exercise or hot weather or illness with fever, for instance. But doctors used to put patients in a hot tub and then examine them afterwards, and that would supposedly bring out neurological deficits. Someone studied this in a formal way, and only about 35% of people had a positive hot tub test. And of course, this is no longer used now that we have modern MRI machines, which were first introduced in the 1980s. But it certainly is an inter interesting historical fact. By the way, I hope you enjoyed the video, and 
and I want to thank Vicky from the Even So It Is Well YouTube channel who originally made a similar video and inspired me to make this. So please check out her channel in the link below and please let me know if you have suggestions for future videos.